Hi everybody, it's Brian here, back at, again for another look at GamePro issue number 56. This is from March 1994, and the cover is really beat up because GamePro like to staple their covers, so I have a lot, a few with missing covers, but you can still read it fine. This one has NBA Jam on the cover when NBA Jam was really big. I was never really into NBA Jam, I didn't have a copy, I played it at a friend's house, thought it was okay. Um, it's obviously one of the best sports games. Um, for arcade basketball action there is. So we see here on the cover NBA Jam for the SNES Genesis and Game Gear plus President Clinton Jams. Free Monster Guide to the Game Gear. So there's a guide for the Game Gear. 39 Pro Reviews, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Raiden, Bugs Bunny and Rabbit Rampage, Alfred Chicken, NHL Stanley Cup, Ground Zero Texas, Double Switch, Young Merlin, Kirby's Pinball Land, Castlevania Bloodlines, and more. And they preview Fatal Fury 2, Bubsy 2, Kitchen, and The Horde. And they have a Mortal Kombat 2 Survival Guide for Beginners. Super Soccer Roundup. Okay, so here we go. Let's get on to the first ad. Castlevania Bloodlines. I just picked this game up. I played it. A uh, friend let me play it once and borrow it. And it's an awesome game. Um, so I wanted to pick it up. And I finally got it. And I'm on my third level right now and I saved the password so I can go back. Um, it's a very fun game. The only game, Castlevania game for the Sega Genesis. And I highly recommend it. Very bloody too. Here's an ad for Clay Fighter. I remember being super excited for that. Got it when it came out. Might have got it the first week it came out. Here's the same ad you see every time I do the magazine. Um, contents. Letters to the editor. Same thing as always. Color coded. I'm going to skip a lot of these ads that I want to run for. Here's the other contents. Game Pro Labs. Fighter's Edge. SWAT Pro, of course. Here's a game for the Sega Genesis I've never heard of. Bubble and Squeak. Interesting. Okay, here, since fighting games were still big, you still had this letter, letter that the editor put in, are games facing a finishing move? Lately there's been a story after story in the newspapers, magazines, and on television about the hottest topic around violence and <clears throat> sexism in electronic games. Senators are calling some video games trash and sexist. Mortal Kombat and Night Trap seem to be the main targets. Other le legislators are calling for a ban on controversial games. To say that the debate is heated is an understatement. On the table are issues like whether violence video games are casual <laughs> violent video games cause players to be more aggressive and if a video game rating system would help curtail excessive violence in society as a whole. So this basically talks about that whole era of Mortal Kombat Night Trap that whole if you remember in the 90s pe people were really going crazy about violent video games and this content the younger kids they eventually the ESRB stepped in and was created and was came up with those ratings that we have today. So this is a preview to that Sega CD Royal Rumble wrestling game or I'm sorry Rage Cage wrestling game. Barkley Shut Up and Jam. And try to get this. Hope that glare is not too bad. And we have the mail. So in the mail, some of the topics are video vixens, sexism debate. I'm writing about Sue Packer's November letter in which she claims that women wear only bikinis in video games. The magazine biz. How can I write to Scary Larry or Slasher Quad? If you don't know who those are, the people, the reviewers in GamePro had these cartoon personalities like Scary Larry, Slasher Quad, and they had a little avatar of themselves. <clears throat> Here's um, Super Super NES profile of Ninja Turtles. They gave it pretty good. Ninja Turtles, Turtles, and uh, Tournament Fighters um, for the Super NES. They gave it pretty good reviews. Let's see, technical. Let's see if I can find another funny, um, funny uh, letter. I must have a Jaguar. When can I get one? The car at a dealership near you. The game system for now only in New York or San Francisco or electronic stores. A national rollout of the Jaguar 
is coming soon. On the cover of Street Fighter 2 Turbo, man, Turbo's manual, there is a blurry old man in the center under the wor world word Turbo. What's going on? That's Dalsim. He's teleporting, which is why he looks ready to disappear. What were the best-selling Sega Genesis games of 1993? Many carts battled for number one, but most cash, the most cash, restituted from a record-setting marketing craze. The actual sale figures won't be available for another few months. But it's unlikely that Sonic, Spinball, Aladdin, or Jurassic Park will come on top in the world of mortal money combat. So they're predicting Mortal Kombat. This was the year Mortal Monday, after all. Here's some more great fan art. Mortal Kombat for the Sega CD. Virtual reality calling. This is, I remember this craze about virtual reality. Never came to pass. Skitchin! This was a Genesis, I believe, skateboarding game. Bubsy, too. I have the first Bubsy. I might have a second, I'm not sure. Sega Activator. Hot at the Arcades, Riding 2. NBA Jam. You can see for the Super Nintendo, it got 4.5 for graphics, 3.0 for sound, 4.0 for control, and 5.0 for fun factor. For the Genesis, it got 4.0 for graphics, 3.0 for sound, 4.0 for control and 5.0 for fun factors. Same scores as the Nintendo minus a 0.5 for graphics. For the Game Gear, <clears throat> it got a 4.0 for graphics, 3.0 for sound, 4.0 for control, and 4.0 for fun factor. Sonic 3 uh, it got a 5.0 for graphics, 4.0 for sound, 5.0 for control, and 5.0 for fun factor. And there is the final say on Sonic 3 is... Okay, so maybe you're secretly wishing that hedgehog <coughs> were extinct. But when you've got a good thing going, there's no reason to give up on it. Sega's taken that motto to heart. And as long as they enhance every Sonic sequel to make it a win, winner, there's no reason to stop this. Hog's going to take the blue ribbon at the state fair, and probably in this year's game cart sweepstakes as well. So they really liked it. Here's an offer for um, TSR Dragon's poster. Kind of cool. Email this in. And send $1.50. And you can send, I am, addition, I am interested in receiving additional information on TSR products and adventure games and books. Way to get on their mail on the list. And here is the Castlevania Bloodlines. <clears throat> and they gave it a 4.0 for graphics, 4.0 for sound, 4.5 for control, and 3.5 for special, uh, for fun factor. <clears throat> This game does not say when it came out, but it was 1994, around the second quarter, spring. And their final write-up is, Bloodlines is a satisfactory action cart, but it belongs in the lower reaches of the Castlevania lineage. One wonders how Konami could make games so perfect in heart, body, and soul as Castlevania one through four, and then drives a stake through the Genesis version. 
the bloodline runs dry. So they didn't really care for it, which, huh, it's really odd. Don't see why. I mean, this plays like a Castlevania game. Zul. Mega Turricon for the Genesis. Action 52 for the Genesis. And you can see the terrible reviews it scores it got graphics 2.0, sound 2.5, control 2.0, and fun factor 1.5. It's not likely you'll find Action 52 at your local software store because non-licensed products like this are pretty rare. When you're where you're likely to see it is in a rental location, and if it might be worth the couple of bucks to give this cart the once over. Beyond that, Action 52, 52's a has been. Family Feud, Joe and Mac for the Genesis. I didn't know there was a Genesis version. Interesting. Chester Cheetah's Wild Wild Quest. Ground Zero Texas. Excalibur 2097. Eternal Champions. Bugs Bunny's Rabbit Rampage. They liked it. They gave it 4.5s across the board and a 5.0 for Fun Factor. I always like these Looney Tunes games because growing up in the 90s, I was a huge fan of Looney Tunes, even though it was an older 70s and 60s cartoon. I used to be on TV. That was the time when it was used to be on TV. I used to watch Roadrunner and Riley Coyote with my dad, and I loved the graphics of the and the cameos of all the Looney Tunes characters. Plus, I love Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally. Super Alfred Chicken. Super Empire Strikes Back. Excalibur 2097. This game looks interesting. I've never played it. It looks like a great, like a run saver type game or a side scrolling, uh, you know, type of game like that. Side scrolling um, action game with a sword. Turn and burn no fly zone. Here's ads for playing card or for collector cards, which were really big back in the '90s. These are from the Valiant comics. So they have different characters. An American Tale Fable goes west. Lunar for the Sega CD. Here's some quick ones, quick games. You see Chester Cheetah's Wild Wild Quest for Super NES. Barbie Supermodel, Kendo's Rage, and Beethoven the Second. These are all for Super Nintendo. All average or below average games they gave scores. Or, I'm sorry, all below average scores they gave it. Excuse me. Fatal Fury 2 for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> and here's Game Genie codes. The Game Genie was still around and they would post, post game, new Game Genie codes. Here's some for Flintstone's Surprise at Dinosaur Peak, if you have that game. Here's some X-Men trading cards, again with the trading cards. Here's a Game Gear Pro Strategy Guide. And we got number 8. What is the total number of colors available in the Game Gear? The Game Gear had 4,096 colors are available. How many sprites can a Game Gear display on screen at once? What's the si what size dot matrix can they be? And how many colors can each sprite have? It can display 64 sprites on screen, on screen with dimensions of 8x8 and 16x6 dot in 16 colors each. A little tech spec about all the Game Gear's attributes. 
Tech Sheet. X Men for Game Gear, Super Sonic Chaos for Game Gear, the Magical King, Magic Kingdom, Tricks for or Land of Illusion. I'm sorry, Deep Duck Trouble, Ariel's Little Mermaid, <coughs> Battle Toads, Chuck Rock Two, Desert Speed Trap, Tasmania, NBA Jam. World Series Baseball, these are all sports right here. Echo the Dolphin, Jurassic Park, Tom and Jerry the Movie, Quest of, for the Shaven Yak starring Ren and Stimpy, Shinobi 2, Mortal Kombat, Streets of Rage 2, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, Robocop vs. Terminator, Star, Tra Star Wars, James Bond 007 The Duel, Desert Strike, and here's some accessories, the Power Pack, this was an extra battery expansion, it gave you more life, cases, AC adapter, cleaning kits, carry-all, excuse me, super wide gear like a magnifying device for your screen head to head link cable <coughs> excuse me Wayne's World for the Nintendo Entertainment System pretty below average scores Jurassic Park for the Sega CD Total Eclipse for the 3DO Got pretty above average scores, 4.0s across the board with 4.5s for graphics. Super Alfred Chicken, Night Trap for the 3DO, Raiden or Raiden for the Jaguar. Flashback for the Genesis and Super Nintendo. The sports pages, NHL Stanley Cup, the Mode 7 sports game that was out near the launch of the Super Nintendo or around the first wave of, um, not the launch, but the first wave of sports games that use that Mode 7 effect. Pele World Cup Soccer, World Soccer. Oh, I'm sorry. World Soccer 94, Road to Glory. Here's an ad for the Super Bomberman, toting the Super, the super Multitown. Here's an Atari Jaguar page. I'll let you read it for yourself. They were really pimping out or advertising 64-bit console. There is one of my favorite wrestlers, a Macho Man Randy Savage. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. This is for World Wrestling Federation Magazine. $18 for 12 issues. The WWF was, uh, yes, I still call it the WWF, it was huge back then. Uh, waking up on the weekends, I'd watch you know, wrestling with my dad. Or, it was just so much fun. The stories, they were just so great. I haven't watched wrestling in a while, so I can't comment on today's wrestling. Young Merlin for the Super Nintendo. This is the role players realm. Kirby's Pinball Land for the Game Boy.
Ninja Gaiden 3 for the Atari Lynx. Interesting. I wanted a Lynx. I, I keep wanting to pick one up. Oh, I didn't know Ninja Gaiden 3 was on it. Road Rash for the Game Gear. Sunset Riders. Adam's Family and Bart Meets Radioactive Lands Man for the Game Gear. Dragon Slayer for the Sega CD. Here's the Game Pro Labs, the Ultra Stick for the Genesis SNES Turbo Duo, Neo Geo, Super Famicom, Mega Drive, and PC Engine. Power Plug for the Genesis NES and Super Nintendo. It says, smoother cornering, faster firing, and pre-programmable gameplay may have been may have been hot when joysticks didn't do this kind of stuff, but now they do. For $40 you could probably find one that does this and more. Sega CD uh, <clears throat> ad. And Sega was always um, advertising with people's faces right in your face in like the 90s, like, whoa, we're adult and cool, you know? Kinda love that. Here's SWAT Pro, SWAT Pro Rocket Knight Adventures. And Mario Lemmy Hockey, my favorite hockey player. Mario Lemmy had his own hockey game. <clears throat> Here's a code to change it to Black Ice. Mortal Kombat. Sonic CD, Silphie, Super Empire Strikes Back, Codes, Rock and Roll Racing Codes, Alien vs. Predator Codes, Sunset Riders, Extra Continues, uh, Extra Continues for Sunset Riders. I could use that actually because I, I was playing that the other day and I didn't beat it. And Extra Continues would help. Here's a, here's a resubscription. <clears throat> here's an ad to resubscribe to Game Pro. Some more SWAT Pro for Disney's Lens, Super Bomberman. Other games here. Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Game Genie Codes. Fighter's Edge, Fatal Fury Special. Tells all the moves and combos. Turbo Duo ad. Uh, I wish I would have bought a Turbo Duo back then. I've been looking for one. It's one system I want to start get. I want to get because it plays both Turbo Graphic 16 games and Turbo Graphic Super CD games, and you don't need that adding card to either. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 2 moves list. Here's an order for a game mage, similar to a game genie. See the game mage, uh, I think it, for a video game enhancer for the Super Nintendo, call to order, special offer $40, wireless gamepad, wireless remote gamepad system for the Super Nintendo, only $39.99. Um, yeah, basically codes like the Game Genie. So if you ever see a game mage, pick it up. This is an ad for a Sega CD game by Vic Tokai, the same guys who did um, <clears throat> a Clash of Demon Head and other classic games. I don't know what the name of it is. The text is really, really small. Mansion of Hidden Souls. Looks like a full motion video game.
short pro shot. King of Monsters 2. King of Monsters series is this great fun. It's just your two monster a two monster fighting game. And one player, two player, and you fight each other, but you have a whole city to destroy. You throw each other into buildings, you use your special monster powers. It's great. The Horde, I remember playing this at a friend's house. Starred Kirk Cameron, kind of like an RPG-ish kind of game. Uh, had full motion video acting, lots of it, by Kirk Cameron and some other actors. Let's see what's shipping in this month in March. For the 3DO, we have the Horde and Sewer Shark. For the Neo Geo, we have Super Sidekicks 2, the World Championship. For the Turbo Duo, Turbo Graphic 16, we have Dynasty Dynastic Hero. For the Game Gear, Caesar's Palace, GP Rider, and NBA Action 94, NBA Jam, Poker Face Pauls, Blackjack, Poker Face Pauls, Poker, Scratch Golf, Spider Man, X Men's Arcade Revenge. And, and for the Game Boy, we had Prehistoric Man. For the arcade, Dungeons and Dragons Tower of Doom. For the Genesis, we had Arcus Odyssey, Columns 3, The Incredible Hulk, NBA Action 94, NBA Jams, Rocco's Modern Life, Spunky's Dangerous Day, Shanghai 2 Dragon's Eye, Skitchen, Socks the Cat, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Star Trek The Next Generation, Subterranea, Sylvester and Tweety. For the Sega CD, we had Brutal, Hammer vs. Evil D, and Soulfire, and Tomcat Alley. And for the Super Nintendo, we had Championship World Class Soccer, Chopper Lifter 3, Fire Striker, F1, Rock 2, NBA Jam, Runes of Virtue, SOS by Vic Tokai, Time Tracks, and Excalibur 2097. Overseas Prospects, Super Godzilla, Artie Lightfoot, these both made their way to here. Dragon Ball Z. Chobudin 2 did not make its way here. Katsuya Onizuka Super Virtual Boxing. Obviously, I don't think it made its way here. Kamen Riders, I don't think made its way here. So let's read a little bit about Dragon Ball Z, because I'm a Dragon Ball Z fan. I want to read what they had to say. Because I never knew anything about Dragon Ball Z back in 94. <clears throat> most Japanese players, like most Americans, can't seem to get enough fighting games. And so we have Dragon Ball Z 2. Based on the animated series and an earlier fighting game, there's very little new here. In this one-on-one -on -one fighting format, combatants balance life and power meters to beat the other guy. The cart features the now familiar Dragon Ball Z dual screen display for aerial attacks. Fighters can ward off special attacks by counterattacking with their own killer techniques. Fans of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and other fighting games shouldn't be disappointed. Little would we know that Dragon Ball Z would become huge. Um, some Six years later, Pro News, Major Stores Pull Night Trap, the CDX system, <clears throat> available in March for $399.95, is basically a Sega CD and, 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 and Genesis in one. Project Reality, dispelling doubts that Jet. Project Reality would ever become a reality, Nintendo is forging ahead with development of its 64-bit game machine. <clears throat> the unit, which is expected to arrive in 1995, will use chip technology supplied by three major Japanese electronic firms, NEC, NEC Toshiba, and Sharp. More than 8 million new RISC, which stands for uh, Reduced Instruction Set computing processors are being shipped to Nintendo as it works on what is considered to be the next generation in quotes video game system. Of course as all of you know this would end up being the N64. Here's NEC was talking about a new system 32 bits. 
joining the race of, to produce a successful 32-bit video game system. The company plans to have its own 32-bit game machine on the market by the end of 1994. The system will offer a CD-ROM drive and an advanced color motion picture board. According to NEC, the machine will be as powerful as Sega's still unreleased 64-bit unit and it will cost approximately $250. Mega Man is coming to TV. Capcom announced in late December that it will be financing and producing a cartoon series starring its popular video game character Mega Man. The still untitled show will most likely be based on the game Mega Man X and will feature most of the characters found in that SNES title. Capcom couldn't say if Dr. Wily would make an appearance. With the first show targeted to air in fall 1994, Capcom has lined up Ruby Spears, a top animation company, to head produ production. Ruby Spears is the award-winning company responsible for the animation animated shows in the last 15 years, including Alvin and Chipmunks, Mr. T, and RoboForce. Sega Channel. <clears throat> Excuse me. Three more cable companies have signed on with the seg with the channel raising the number of U.S. subscribers to more than 20 million. The addition of Metrovision in Atlanta, Georgia, National Cable Television Corporation in Lingsa, Kansas, and Simmons, Simmons Communication in Dallas, Texas, added 4 million new subscribers to the interactive video game TV channel. The Sega Channel, which is set to launch this summer, is the cable industry's first interactive service supplying Genesis games on demand 24 hours a day, previews of upcoming titles, tips, news, contests, and promotions. The Sega Channel concept has been enthusiastically received, says Stanley B. Thomas, President and CEO of Sega Channel. We were delighted to have attracted such outstanding partners for our launch plans. Their early commitment is a testimony to our future, to future success. So there's some big stories that I thought I should point out. And here's um, Lethal Enforcer's ad. 3DO says sales slow stock suffers. 3DO sales slow. Stock suffers. Here's how the 3DO is struggling. Atlanta, Georgia will be the site of the initial Electronics Entertainment Expo, the first international trade show dedicated exclusively to entertainment training software titles, pro programming, and licensing properties for April 7th through the 9th, 1995. The event will be produced and promoted jointly by Infotainment World and Knowledge Industries Publications. So that's the first CES. We're getting to the end here. just go over some prices of games. I don't think I did this before. So let's pick some here we got Mega Man X for $60, $59.99 Some role playing games for Genesis we have Shining Force was $48 3DO games are around $42, $42.44 Turbo Duo was $289 back then So that brings us to the end of Game Pro issue number 56 for March 1994. I hope you enjoyed this look through and a trip down memory lane, and I will talk to you all soon. Have a great day. Bye.